Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today for this uh, webinar. We just uh, we're just on time. Uh, so let's uh, let's start. So today we're going I'm going to do a, a, a presentation of uh, of Kutia, uh, the company and but mostly the, the, the our technology, the Optocom technology and the, the 3D scanners that we do uh, uh, that we der derive from this uh, technology. So I'm Sylvain Sergent. I'm a business manager here and project manager at uh, at Kutia, and so I'm going to do this presentation. And after that, we will have a, a short demo of our N90 uh, scanner, and we'll finish with uh, with questions and uh, answers. So I hope uh, you all see the, um, uh, the screen. So this is uh, how my presentation is going. So let's start with uh, a few words about uh, about Kutia. So our, our company is uh, still pretty uh, small and was founded in, uh, back in 2002 by our founder, Dr. Korogi, who actually was at uh, the inception of uh, optical frequency sitcoms. Um, a few years after the company was founded, actually the optical frequency sitcom got the, the Nobel Prize uh, in physics. Uh, and at the time, as uh, the nominees of the, of, uh, the Nobel Prize in physics, uh, got uh, were actually on the board of our company. So uh, we uh, developed uh, slowly for for about a, a decade, and finally we uh, introduced our our application Optocom uh, 3D scanners in 2016. And so since then, we have been applying this uh, unique uh, technology to um, uh, inspection, mostly in the automaking uh, automotive industry. So here in Japan, we're actually number one for the inline inspection uh, of automotive parts. And basically our Optocom scanners have been introduced uh, at all uh, Japanese automakers. So in particular, we, we, are, we are doing business with, uh, with Nissan that uses uh, our Optocom scanners for uh, its uh, engine inspection. We also work with Mazda and, and many other uh, Japanese automakers. And we are, uh, thanks to our success, we've been able to partner with uh, uh, big companies uh, here in Japan, such as uh, Juki or Nikon, with whom we are developing a high value added uh, application based on our core technology, the Optocom technology. Uh, so a few words about uh, this uh, technology. So our Optocom uh, uh, laser, our Optocom technology is a kind of revolutionary laser. It's not like a usual laser for which you have a single, uh, a single laser line at a single wavelength. Actually, Optocom lasers are constitutive of hundreds of thousands of laser lines that are very well defined, well spaced and synchronized. So this kind of, uh, of uh, very specific laser have been dubbed the most uh, accurate uh, ruler, as is the concept. It is, as I said before, it's been awarded the 2005 Nobel Prize in, in physics. So it can, this, this um, yeah, laser line resembles really the, the, the mark on a ruler and can be used as such. And so we've been leveraging this uh, uh, basic concept uh, to make industrial application for uh, optocoms. And basically, we are we are making sensors that are able to uh, do time of flight measurements at different points of a single object, and doing so, mapping in 3D uh, the object. So we op we can obtain we are with our Optocom sensors the 3D profile of uh, complex objects. So the nice thing, uh, obviously, is that we can do it with micrometer uh, resolution, which wouldn't be possible with uh, normal lasers. And also we can do it in a coaxial uh, uh, configuration, which is really a, a, um, an advantage when it comes to, um, to profiling complex objects. Um, so we can actually incorporate our sensors in line, which is what we do for most, uh, for most automakers here in, uh, in Japan. But it can also be used uh, as a standalone, so we have a, a, a range of solutions that are standalone, not necessarily in line. And so, using that those kind of sensors, we can we can inspect a range of uh, of uh, different parts. Of course, uh, we can look at very simple uh, structures, but other uh, 3D uh, laser scanners can do uh, a similar a similar job. But most importantly, when it comes to much more complex structures, um, either small or, or medium sized, our scanners are, are able to really scan fully 
uh, such uh, such components, such parts, such objects uh, at a much faster speed than what is usually used in those cases, meaning a contact probe, because normal laser uh, 3D scanners are not able to, to look at those. So this is where the part where we're really, really strong, medium part uh, with complex uh, shapes that are typically hard to, to address with either other 3D scanners or uh, contact probes. Um, and so I'm going, I, I wanna go back to the, the real advantages, the, the various advantages of our uh, Optocom. Um, so we have fast, pretty fast. Of course, our sensors are, are automated. As I said already several times, we can address complex geometries. Because we have a micrometer resolution, we can look at micro defects. And also, uh, fourth advantage, uh, we can work, operate in uh, any light environment. So if um, I want to just show you a, a small video, I, I'm going to do a demo later so you'll have a better look, but uh, at least so that you, you can uh, wrap your mind about uh, how that works. So basically, we have this laser line that goes through uh, a part here, it's a cylinder head, rather, rather complex. And doing so, uh, we can fully map the uh, cylinder head. You can see on the right of, uh, of your, your screen, the typical result of uh, scanning such a cylinder head. And because uh, we can actually uh, measure 500,000 points per, per second. Looking at such a, such a medium-sized uh, part is actually pretty fast with our uh, optical frequency comb scanners. So I, I said that we can address complex uh, geometry. Why, why is, is that so? So it's mainly because of the long working distance of our sensors and also um, the coaxial configuration of, of the cone sensors. So if you compare, for example, to, uh, to um, other uh, laser scanners, they are based on a triolation concept, meaning that the incident light that you can see here and the reflected light are not aligned along the same axis. And because of that, you end up with shadowing effects. Uh, and you cannot obtain the full uh, 3D profile of uh, shapes that are that are complex. Of course, you can you can try to to go around this shadowing effect and scan multiple times your part. But when you have a really high aspect ratio feature, it's really difficult to get a full profile. With the coaxial configuration, so if the light goes in, the light goes out, and you can get you can get uh, your full profile. Another uh, issue uh, facing uh, uh, other sensors, competing competing sensors are their short walking distance. Of course, if you have a short walking distance and you can, your, your part is not big enough for the sensor to get into the, the part, it's really difficult to get the full profile of your, of your part. We have a walking distance going up to 127 millimeters. And uh, doing so, we, we're able to really look at medium-sized uh, parts fully and get really deep into uh, slits and, and holes and bores. And this is not only just a concept, of course, uh, if we compare for, for typical parts, uh, we can really look at the full profile while other, uh, other methods end up with, with some issues. So here, a comparison for a cylinder head, uh, no shadowing effect for us. For, uh, this is a bearing, uh, no shadowing effect with uh, optocom sensors. And this is a more simple case. Uh, you, you think that any sensor can do that, but actually with high walls, um, uh, triangulation uh, lasers are not able to uh, to fully profile the part, and you end up with some shadowing effect. And so, in the end, we really look at a large uh, range of uh, of complex uh, uh, geometries with our sensors. The next advantage is the micrometer resolution. So I, I think here, uh, scanning this uh, this uh, uh, micro stats. Uh, shows you is a really vivid example of this micrometer resolution. You can see like really nicely the difference between each step. This is raw data. It's not it's not processed, and it uh, and it looks uh, it looks perfect. It shows the exact uh, uh, step of um, uh, difference between each uh, each step. So really nice micrometer resolution. And because we have this micrometer resolution along the laser axis we're able to look at three-dimensional micro defects. So we look at um, uh, particles of various sort, we can look at bursts, we can inspect uh, scratches, and not only we can, we can tell, we, we can detect such uh, particles, we can 
discriminate in between the effects, saying this is a burr, this is a scratch. Uh, and we can be quantitative about it. So, for example, for this, uh, this sample with uh, four scratches uh, uh, um, next to each other, we can tell the depth of each scratch and discriminate in between scratches, right? And we can we can also tell the difference between such scratches and a burr that you can see here. This is a 40 micron, micrometer burr on the edge of a machine part. So we can look at, at really a large part of defects and not only on the flat surface as shown in those uh, examples, but also because of the long working distance and coaxial configuration of uh, of uh, our um, of uh, our sensor, we can look really deep into the into the parts. So, for example, here you have um, you have a cylinder and a counter bore inside the, the cylinder, where actually the the, the bore here is uh, the counter bore here is, is damaged, and you can see there is some some burr here on the uh, on the edge. Obviously, to to uh, to look at such kind of uh, of defects really deep inside the part, you need a coaxial configuration. It will never work with a with a triangulation laser. So here another example, and also you can look at yeah different kind of uh, defects at different uh, different faces. Here for this rotor, you can look at a, a dent and a particle on the top face, but also at the dents and scratches on the bottom of this uh, of this uh, rotor. And the last advantage is the fact that we can really operate any uh, um, uh, any uh, light environment, uh, even for shiny surfaces. So we, we really uh, we we don't care about the kind of um, the kind of reflectivity you have on your on your part. It, we need some reflectivity, of course, because the laser go back and forth between uh, the object, uh, the sensor, and the object. And so we need some kind of reflectivity. But if it's too reflective, it's not a, it's not a problem. We need just it's very sensitive also, so it can be a very matte, uh, uh, matte surface, and we still have some, uh, some information on it. So it's, it, it works pretty, pretty well to that regard. So let's look at actually what we what we offer based on this uh, Optocom uh, technology. So the core of our lineup is are actually uh, those three sensors, which I will detail a bit later, and we can incorporate those uh, sensors in line. But also we can um, we can uh, we offer solutions where the sensors are already integrated. So we have this standalone um, standalone solution, which is actually X Y Z. Uh, stage with one of our sensor, we can uh, put our sensor on on top of a robot arm. Um, we we can um, set up uh, an arm with a rotating mirror to actually look at uh, bore at the inner walls uh, of bore and and do the visual and the dimensional inspection of uh, complex uh, complex bores like this. And we have also some solution hybrid solutions that we developed with our partners. Um, so this is uh, actually. A uh, hybrid solution, both an optical camera and uh, our Optocom scanners put together in order to, to get the best of, uh, of both worlds. In addition to this hardware, obviously, we have, we have some, uh, we have some uh, software uh, solutions. So the, the very basic is actually the data acquisition software that controls the, the, the sensors. So obviously, it, it comes together with the software. But in addition to that, uh, for customers uh, who, who wish, um, we have a, what we call the Optocom suite that allows to visualize uh, the Optocom 3D data, but also to, uh, to run some automated visual inspection with Optocom detector, automated dimensional inspection with Optocom ruler, and we also automate uh, volume inspection with Optocom uh, scaler. So those are the, the three sensors that are the, the core of our, of our solution. We have a wide range sensor, N90, a high resolution sensor, S40, and ultra high resolution sensor, N5. And so let's look a bit at the, at the specs of each, uh, each sensors. If you look at L90, we have a pretty long walking distance up to 100, 127 millimeters. And uh, you can actually, the measurement range is 130 millimeter, meaning plus minus 65 millimeters around the focal point of the laser. So this means that you can actually measure at a point that is uh, up to 192 millimeters from the sensor. So you can really measure uh, a medium sized part without any problem. Um, the S40 has a shorter walking distance, 
uh, and M5 also a bit shorter, down to 74 millimeters. Most importantly, the measurement range is, is significantly smaller with S40 and M5. They're also uh, their resolution is also much better. Uh, so it's plus minus three millimeter for S40, plus minus 200 micron for for M5. And typically, those high resolution sensors are are, are done are used to uh, either do the dimensional inspection of small and pretty uh, flat parts. And uh, to look at uh, to look at defects to uh, detect uh, and quantify uh, defects on uh, on flat surfaces. So uh, as you saw in the in the video uh, earlier, so our uh, sensors are uh, have a line scan. So if you have a line scan, you need to uh, to move the the part with respect to the to the sensor in order to get a three dimensional uh, profile. But we also with S40 and M5 have uh, area scans. Uh, um, where you, you don't actually need to, to move the part, you can have a steel part, and, and yet you, you'll get a three-dimensional uh, scan of your uh, part, three-dimensional profile of your, of your part. If you look at resolution, which is probably the, the most important here, um, so as I say, we can go um, down to one micron in a resolution with our S40 and N5. So this is a Z resolution along the laser axis. For N90, the resolution is 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 a bit uh, is a bit worse. It's a 10 uh, 10 micrometer. Um, and if you look at repeatability, which is also very uh, important. So basically, uh, we have two plus minus two micron for uh, L90 and plus minus one micron for S40 and N5. Uh, when you look at XY resolution, our, our XY resolution is basically limited by the, the laser spot, the size of the laser spot. So the laser spot is actually 100 micrometer for L90, 60 micrometer for uh, S40, and it's, um, it's uh, 28 micron for M5. And if you look at repeatability, the repeatability is related to the galvano mirror that actually uh, moves the laser spots on the on the, the objects and it's plus minus uh, uh, 10 micrometers. So finally, rapidly, I would like to um, to, to show you a few uh, applications of uh, our optocom sensors and then I'll move to the to the demo. So basically we can look at a large range of uh, machine parts, casting, forging, die castings, um, but also uh, parts that have a cylindrical that has a cylindrical features. Of course, our track record, as I said at the beginning of this uh, introduction, is um, is uh, mostly in the automotive uh, industry. But uh, we can also inspect beyond that. We our optical sensors can can look at really uh, different kind uh, of parts, not only uh, for the automotive uh, industry. So, for example, um, so this first example is a is a valve body. So with a single scan with our L90 uh, sensor, you can actually fully uh, uh, fully profile your 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 valve body. Um, you can do uh, not only the, the visualization with uh, with this uh, single scan, but also we can automate the visual inspection and the dimensional inspection. So you get the 3D profile. You can detect and quantify the defects. And you can do also the dimensional GDNT analysis of your part. So here it's only uh, uh, bore diameters and, and, and roundness, but obviously you can do much more than that. You can look at the flatness, uh, uh, um, positional deviations, etc. cetera. Uh, everything automated with a single scan. We, we also have, uh, as I said before, uh, our helical scan solution. So an optocom uh, a sensor with a rotating mirror at its, uh, at its end which allows us uh, to scan within bores. And so uh, you can actually get uh, information about the diameter, the roundness, or the cylindricity of your, of your bore with uh, about a two micron uh, resolution. But you can also do the visual inspection of your, of your bore, and you can look, for example, here at, uh, at the defects, at defects on the inner, inner walls, at the inner walls of the, of the bore. Of course, this is for uh, uh, inner uh, diameters, inner balls, but you can also look at cylindrical parts from the from the outside. So just by by putting your part on a on a rotating uh, uh, axis, uh, we can actually scan cylindrical parts li like this, and again look at cylindricity, uh, roundness, or or diameters. 
One uh, the last uh, applications I wanted to introduce is probably the, the one we, we had the, the most success in the in the last uh, last few years is uh, using our uh, our uh, sensors to inspect senior heads. So actually doing so, we we able to um, to calculate the volume of uh, of uh, each combustion chamber of the cylinder head, um, and and prevent standard deviation down to 0.05 cc. So what our customers do is integrate our sensors on their manufacturing line, pre-process the cylinder head, uh, check uh, the cylinder head with our, our sensors, apply some uh, correction process to correct the volume of the cylinder head based on our data, and then recheck after the correction process that the correction process wa was implemented correctly. And if you doing so, so they can reduce the standard deviation down of their combustion chamber volume down to 0.05 cc. But they can go even further if they uh, inspect the volume, the, the piston um, uh, with our sensor and do some piston matching between the combustion chamber and the piston, they can further reduce the standard deviation uh, uh, of the volume of the combustion chamber down to 0.005 cc. And doing so, they can actually implement much more aggressive uh, uh, designs. They can uh, increase the performance of the engine and they can uh, increase the fuel efficiency in uh, specifically of their engines. OK, so this is it for the um, uh, this is it for for the introduction to. Uh, Kutia and our Autocom technology, and then I, I would like to move a, a little bit to the to the demonstration of our uh, L90 uh, L90 sensors. So I'm going to uh, stop this presentation, and we're going to move to the we're going to move to the measurement PC. Okay. So uh, as you can see, this is uh, basically. Um, our data acquisition software. This one is based on uh, on the LabVIEW, so very very simple one. And uh, you can see uh, the sensor just uh, just uh, next here, next to the measurement uh, PC. So this is sensor the sensor head, and you have the the cylinder head just uh, just uh, below. So the first thing that we, you you need to do when you when you have your uh, when you have your, your 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 new part on the on the stage here, is to check the focus. So it's an L90 sensor with a plus minus 65 millimeter measurement range. So it's, it's not such so sensitive, right? But still, uh, we better do it. So let's look at let's look at the um, at the now the intensity. Sorry. The, the intensity of the reflected light on the surface of this cylinder head. So if I move up and down, if I move uh, up and down the sensor head, you will see that the intensity here of the of the reflected light is going to go, to go up and down. And as a maximum of intensity, you actually uh, get the focus of your of your laser. Once you have done that, you validate, and you check um, you check the, uh, your sc scanning parameters. So first, you need to define where you want to start your sc your scan, where you want to end it. So let's start here. We want to scan uh, the three commission chambers of this uh, of this cylinder head. Okay, so this is it. You can choose a pitch. Here the pitch is quite close, 300 micrometer, but we can uh, we can redo a scan later with a better better uh, uh, pitch. And basically that's it. We can uh, we can scan. You can see that the part is uh, is moving, going to the first uh, uh, the first point of the scan, moving through the combustion chamber to the uh, to the end point, and that's it. Okay, this is uh, the output data. So you you can see here the cross uh, the cross section uh, of the data. So it gives you a bit of an idea, but it's not so so, so convenient to uh, to look at the data here. So let's save the, this file, and this should be this one. Yeah. So this is the data we just uh, we just took. So you you see this uh, 90 millimeter wide uh, scan of the full 
uh, the four uh, cylinder head, or at least the three combustion uh, chambers that we wanted to uh, to scan. So this looks like a, like a, a solid uh, solid data, but actually, um, but actually, this is a 3D points data, right? Our our scanner, our our sensor is a flying dot uh, uh, scanner. So actually, it records the position. Uh, the Z the Z position of the surface for each X Y X Y point. So this is it. So as you can see, the the density of uh, of points really depends on the um, on the angle of the of the surface. So on the top surface, it's really perpendicular to the sensor. This is where there are the most the most points, so the high, highest density of points. So you you get a pretty uh, uh, pretty accurate uh, information from uh, from there. But of course, here on the on the edge of the combustion uh, uh, chamber, you can see that there are less points because the the wall is all, almost parallel to the um, uh, to the laser, and there is no uh, not so much uh, um, uh, points here. The light is reflected, even though the intensity is lower. We can still detect light because our sensor is pretty is pretty sensitive. But there are less less points. So if you want to get better data on this area, for example, you need either to change the angle of the of the sensor or to do uh, to use a finer pitch, which would be uh, uh, time consuming. So so I wouldn't uh, recommend it. But as you can see, you you can uh, you can really look down to the to the bottom of the of the chamber, uh, and you can see even the um, the valve guide at the at the bottom, which is pretty which is pretty cool. And so we you use that kind of data actually to uh, to uh, fully inspect the volume of uh, combustion chambers. But we you can obviously apply uh, our uh, L90 uh, sensor data to to any kind of complex uh, part inspection of any complex uh, complex parts. Okay, so that's it uh, for for this one. Maybe I can show you uh, that actually when you decrease uh, well, yeah, decrease the pitch of um, when you decrease the pitch of the scanning. So from 300 micron to 1, 0.1 millimeter, so um, 100 micron. Obviously, you'll get much more accurate data. But the problem is you're going to increase your uh, scanning time because, again, uh, we have a flying dot uh, scanner. So the more points you, you want, the, the, the longer. Uh, it will it will take. So let's look also at the sensor at the at the same time to show you. So here we are moving uh, much uh, much uh, slower uh, with a hundred micron pitch is in both the x direction and the y uh, direction. So previously with a three hundred by three hundred uh, uh, micron uh, pitch. We had a scan time around uh, seven seconds, 6.7 seconds here. But uh, here that should be uh, much longer, uh, maybe a bit below the minute. We'll see the results soon. Okay, you can see the progress here of the of the scanning. Okay, that's it. So once uh, the part is back, we can save. Yes, let's look at this, this data. Okay. So again, it looks uh, it looks pretty nice. Again, less points here on the walls that are almost uh, almost vertical, but you get a much uh, denser uh, uh, denser uh, points uh, everywhere. And so based on this uh, on this data, we can. Uh, uh, do automate the, the inspection process. So I'm going to give you just one example. So as I say, we can do visual in, uh, inspection, automate, automated visual inspection. We can do uh, automated dimensional inspection and, and volume inspection. And with that kind of data, we, we, I'm going to show you just uh, the, volume, uh, the volume inspection. Of course, if you want to, to get uh, more information after that, we'll, uh, uh, you can always check our tutorials, our video on YouTube that have uh, a lot of uh, information in them. And you can contact us for uh, any further uh, any further information. So um, let's uh, let's uh, stop uh, this uh, uh, PC control. And we will go back to the to the analysis uh, to the analysis PC. Okay. 
So this is uh, our analysis PC, and you can see here the optocom suite um, with the four components of the optocom suite for visualization, uh, automated dimensional inspection, and automated visual inspection. And so the last one we're going to uh, to uh, to use here. So it's pretty uh, simple. You, you need to uh, you need to make a recipe first, but obviously we don't have time to uh, to do that today. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's uh, take the, uh, the recipe that's already been made. It's not so long, but it takes like uh, when you're used to it, it takes about half an hour to to do that kind of uh, that kind of uh, recipe. And let's look at uh, similar data to it's a different cylinder head, but it's very similar data. So we got the data, we got the recipe, and we we just need to uh, to inspect and, and check how it goes. So this is the data here, four combustion chambers actually. This is a nice sweet sweet data. And so the software is going to recognize a valve seat for each uh, part of the combustion chamber and measure for each combustion chamber the exact uh, volume. So it's pretty uh, pretty uh, fast. It's 15 seconds to do to do that, um, and you can you can output in CC the volume of each combustion chamber. So around 30 CC here with some variation. As you can see uh, here, so this is very pretty efficient. W once you have the 3D data with our optical sensor, you can do a lot of uh, differences, uh, different things. And so, I encourage you to uh, to check our website or our uh, videos on YouTube to 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 see uh, what's possible. Okay. Okay. So, I think uh, we have uh, plenty of time for uh, for a Q and A. Um, so I would like to uh, I would like to uh, welcome your uh, your questions maybe if you have any you can uh, you can send the questions in the um, in the chat uh, I got some questions actually um, uh, beforehand so I can uh, I can uh, take a look at those. If there is no question from the audience right now. So the operating wavelengths, okay, thanks. Um, that's a good question. So the operating wavelength is one point, it's around 1.55 micrometers, right? Uh, so as I say, there are plenty of different, uh, different laser lines. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, obviously, this is not a, 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 sh a sharper spectrum, but it's around 1.55 micrometers. So it's a, you cannot actually see the, the, the light because it's in the infrared range. Um, and because it's uh, under 10 milliwatt in power, it's actually a laser, a class one uh, laser. So it's really, uh, it's really uh, harmless. Um, as you notice in the video or here in the, in the demo, you, you can see uh, like a red, uh, a laser line, a red laser. But actually, it's just um, a laser guide, right? It's uh, just so that we can see where the laser spot is, and it's for for the user uh, for the user convenience. Thanks. Any other question? Yeah, let's. So I'm um, I'm being asked uh, what uh, mounting option I can consider for the bore sc scanner. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by the the mounting option. So basically, uh, maybe we'll do like a, a, a webinar dedicated to the to the helical uh, uh, scan, so you can get more info about that. Uh, but so as I said, basically it's um, we have our our sensors, uh, and at the end of the laser we have a rotating. Uh, rotating mirror that uh, that translates uh, within the within the bore, and so um, so this is the, the the core the core of the of the solution, right? And then of course, depending on the, the exact application, you can you uh, you can set up your own stage, your uh, your uh, own uh, environment, and. And basically, our helical scan is based on the specs of S40, so one micrometer resolution along the laser axis, um, and 
uh, about uh, 16 micrometer uh, uh, in the um, tangential uh, plane, let's say. Okay, I hope this answers your, your, your question. Otherwise, you can always uh, uh, get back uh, get back to us and uh, send us uh, 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 an email. We will be happy to 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 buy more specifically. Um, I have a, I had one question. Yeah, so somebody asked me the level of expertise that uh, uh, users uh, usually usually need in order to successfully uh, um, use our our sensors. So as, as you saw, it's uh, it's pretty. It's pretty basic to actually operate the sensor, uh, the sensor itself. Um, so it's really push button, and we for obviously for inline inspection, we don't need a human in, in intervention, and and you can really uh, automate your um, your measurement and the inspection later on. Probably what requires a, a bit more uh, a bit more expertise would be to uh, to do the. Um, uh, the recipes to make the recipes for the automated inspection. It's uh, it's uh, doable. It is a, there is a learning curve, but this is uh, this is this is really possible. No problem. Any other question? Ah, uh, yeah. Somebody asked me also uh, how long to uh, to use uh, uh, this product. Uh, uh, effectively, I, I think uh, I think as you saw under under an hour, I think we can we can really uh, we can really uh, master the, the software and the and the source sensor itself. Uh, and again, if you want to to um, to learn a bit more about the automated inspection softwares, it takes uh, it takes longer. Uh, but yeah, so the basics is really the basic software measurement software is really easy to use. Somebody has asked me if um, before the webinar if uh, we sell actually our hardware and, and software separately. So obviously the, um, the measurement uh, software needs uh, to be uh, to be uh, used with a sensor. So we we, we sell it uh, uh, as a as a bundle. We it's a, it's a it's a bundle so solution. But all the the optocom suite, so the visualization, um, the uh, the automated inspection uh, software. This is uh, as a choice of the of the of the user. You, you, if you want, uh, if you want it, if you're interested, in it, we can uh, we can use it. Otherwise, you can you can just use our data with a third party uh, uh, software. There's uh, no problem. Because actually, um, I didn't I didn't show it, but uh, you can uh, you can e um, export the data. As a CSV file, as a text file, or as a STL file, so you can really uh, use the data as a, as a, as you wish. If you uh, if you uh, you have your favorite uh, inspection software, go ahead. You can you can use it. Uh, no no problem. Okay. What is the smallest defect that can be measured uh, on the surface? So that's a uh, that's a good question, I would say. Um, so basically, if you want to 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 uh, look at very small defects, you need to to use uh, the highest resolution uh, uh, sensor, uh, which is uh, M5. And M5, for example, you can uh, you can look. Uh, I, I show you, like for example, um, scratches that were a few microns in depth. Uh, or burrs that were like a few tens of micron in uh, in in height. Uh, I think uh, from personal experience, uh, you can get pretty pretty good results with M5. You're looking at uh, uh, at scratches with depth down to five or five micrometers, and and width around yeah 50 micron. It still, it still it still works with uh, with that kind of uh, defects. If you go uh, smaller than that, it's going to be a bit uh, tough, and it's going to depend. Also on the um, uh, on the type of surface you have, so it really depends on the material. So it may it may change from one material to the other. Uh, but basically, that, that gives you uh, that gives you an idea of what we we can look at. Uh, if you use uh, S40, the the defects that you can look at uh, are going to be um, 
uh, a bit bigger, especially in width, because uh, the XY resolution is, is, is worse. So yeah, you, you, you can look at something that is a bit smaller than 100 micrometers. And with, uh, with L90, uh, usually we, we uh, recommend L90 for visual inspection just for large scratches, dense, so that are about uh, 200 micron or 300 micron in uh, uh, of width and and depths are a, a few a few tens of uh, of micro, microns. Okay. I had another question um, before this webinar. Yeah. So it was yeah. Somebody asked me if the um, software uh, can interface with with uh, other uh, you know, data analysis programs or, or other maybe the, uh, um, measurement programs if you integrate our sensor in a in a system, and so so obviously you can you can export uh, the data uh, and and use a third party program, but uh, we you can we can also provide for specific projects that uh, that uh, need a, um, a full a full integration. We can provide our software as a DLL, and you can actually. Um, you can actually leverage the, the DLL and 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 call it from from your own uh, from your own software. So this this is possible to interface with our data acquisition software. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Nobody asked me that question, but maybe some of you uh, wonder. Um, so most of the part I showed you in the presentation were uh, uh, metal parts, right? Uh, so the nice thing about metal parts for us is because um, because the operating uh, wavelength is 1.55 uh, micrometer, and because uh, metal reflects uh, like uh, nicely the uh, uh, light in this uh, in this spectral region. This is very easy for us to uh, to scan things. But obviously, uh, there are lots of materials that are transparent at that uh, at that wavelength, and uh, so I'm, we often ask if we can actually measure uh, uh, parts and materials that are transparent at 0.5 micrometers. And so, for example, glass. So basically, it will depend on the reflectivity of the of the surface, right? Uh, if uh, if you have a very rough surface that is not going to uh, to reflect much uh, much light, most of the light will be uh, transmitted through your through your glass, and you won't you won't get uh, much data. But if you have a, a very uh, like a mirror like uh, um, polished uh, uh, glass surface, and you you want to look at defect on this uh, on this polished glass, this is possible for us to to look at this because there is a, a really decent reflectivity. Uh, and so we can we can look at the at the top uh, a mirror like uh, uh, face of your of your glass uh, glass part. And so it's it's the same with other transparent materials. If you think about uh, other semiconductors, uh, if it's fl flat enough and mirror enough, it's it's possible. Uh, obviously, uh, we can we can we need also to uh, to be careful that there is not um, multiple reflections. Because obviously, if you have several mirror-like surfaces in a transparent material, you will you will get the information uh, of uh, the three uh, or the, the several uh, interfaces uh, of your material. So that, this might be a, a problem. But usually, the highest uh, intensity signal is from the top surface, and we can we can get some information and we can scan this top uh, surface. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think the, the lifetime is about uh, four or five years. Uh, I should know that. Yeah, it's a uh, four, uh, four or five years. Uh, at least uh, guaranteed, right? It, it may live longer, but uh, but this is guaranteed uh, for five years. Okay, so if uh, 
if you don't have more questions, I think we can uh, wrap up uh, this uh, webinar. I thank you uh, very much for, for all your questions, for your participation. And uh, obviously, if you want to, um, to have more information, you can well, you can go to our website, uh, obviously, kutia.global. Uh, um, but you can also directly contact me, uh, sergeant.silva at uh, optocom.com. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn as well, so so feel free to connect with me. I'll be happy to uh, to reply to answer your questions. And uh, well, in the meantime, I uh, thank you again for participating, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll meet uh, soon. Thank you very much.